My latest invention in the category of oddly satisfying nightmare fuel, the teeth wall. I love it. Hey, did you guys hear about the rumor that I started just now? That Simone isn't actually a human, but seven very smart lab rats stacked on top of each other, wearing a trendy t-shirt? I'll prove it one day. But not this day. For this day I am talking about the teeth wall. What a fun way to start October. Simone is a delight, and I have watched her videos for many moons now, but she never did anything musical or kind of quippy enough that I could dub until now, until the teeth wall, so I knew it was time to sink my teeth into this dub. The music theory behind this dub comes from a different place than any other dub I've done because there is a very specific visual cue for me to follow. If you will please direct your attention to the picture appearing on your screens now. Here's the teeth wall, and here's Simone looking very proud. And here are all the notes that the teeth are clacking out. As you might have picked up on, there are only 12 sets of teeth despite having a two octave keyboard, which is why Simone only plays the bottom half of that keyboard because the top half, I suspect, does nothing because they're linked to nothing. Normally when I'm writing an arrangement for a dub, I have to come up with the notes or kind of pick out what they are but this time I didn't have to, because they were all visually laid out in front of me. So the first thing I did was not actually to write music at all, but it was just to play the same notes that she was playing, and that would build my melody line. So here's just the piano notes that she is playing. And that's the foundation of the dub, so it has this whole total sense of direction. The only thing I really needed to decide there was how to phrase that stuff. On a surface level, it just sounds like a bunch of clickety clackities, but you can pick out rhythms in there, and depending on how you subdivide those clickety clackities, you can create musical phrases that last X length and then stitch those musical phrases into a whole piece. Some of the clickety clackities even lend themselves just naturally and fully well into becoming a fleshed out musical phrase. Listen to this 10 note bit. That's already got a whole rhythm to it. So in the final dub that becomes, couldn't be easier. The only other theory thing I wanna point out is the use of range which I am apparently expressing with the wiggly wavy dance. I'm a firm believer that variety is the spice of life and also music and also spice, music, spices music. Whenever I listen to music, I am always pleased by a little change in pace. Songs that are like four minutes of the exact same beat, the exact same grind can easily get tiring. Music is, along with many other things, entertainment, right? We want to be entertained. We want to have things that are interesting happening, some neat stuff going on. So that's what I try and put into the dubs. Although our melody that we've picked out from the video is limited to basically this range, no flats or sharps for this girl. No way, sir. That doesn't mean we can't go all the way down here, all the way up here. And we do because we're fearless. So right after we have this, this phrase, the next thing we do is go all the way down here. Now it's all the way down here. And then we go all the way up here. And that still works in the context of the melody that Simone has played because we're still doing the same notes. Our octaves are just way different. As an aside, I wanted to offer my two cents into the acoustics of Teeth Wall and the actual construction of it because I found it very interesting to watch Simone and Andrew Wong, renowned YouTube sound designer, try and get the right sound out of these things. Ultimately, if you want to get different pitch from these teeth, then the main thing you need to have are different sized teeth. 
Smaller teeth with less surface area are going to make a higher pitched clack, and deeper teeth are going to make a deeper clack. That's a constant across all musical instruments. That's why the tuba sounds lower than the trumpet. That's why the cello sounds lower than the violin. It's admittedly tricky to get in teeth, because teeth, but also because teeth are very simple. There's not a whole lot of tubing and acoustics and stuff for the sound to run through. We need to go down to like the very basics of how percussion instruments work. So I think in order to get a really distinguishable sound, especially to go like a full octave, you'd need to get some pretty differently sized teeth. At one end, you'd have these big old hippo chompers, and at the other end, you'd have these little castanet, little like just two teeth, like rabbit buck teeth. Clack, 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 clack. So if anyone else wants to make their own teeth wall, I highly recommend getting 12 sets of differently sized teeth and seeing how your sound works out. Here we are in the land of Cubase. This is kind of a bizarre arrangement. We've got some acoustic guitar, piano, and then just bits of percussion. The percussion came in first. Because this is teeth, because this is Halloween, because this is October, I knew I needed some clickety clackities of my own to match the teeth. Hence, the bells the wood shaker, because it's like shaking bones. The regular shaker, because it's like shaking a finely ground bone. I don't know why I did three cymbal recordings of just a standing cymbal. I, I didn't want to set up three microphones, but then I was like, I need a fuller cymbal sound, so I just recorded it three times, like an idiot. The other important thing about the percussion here is that with a dub like this, where our rhythm is pretty stilted and jumping around, percussion can really, really ease the listening and make things make sense. I'm just trying to pick out those few phrases, those seconds here and there that are like, okay, this has a little bit of flow. And then it's trying to lock into that flow and accentuate it so it feels like music. All the phrases end with a double note. And that is very much by my design. By a double, what I mean is that we are hitting, hitting our regular rhythm, regular rhythm, regular rhythm, another one right afterwards, and that's the ending of the phrase. And it happens three times in a row. That's one. That's two. That's three. And to have that rhythmic motif repeat three times like that, gives us some semblance of structure in what would otherwise be chaos. So it helps make it a little more comprehensible to the ear. Here at the end, we've just got a classic cadence setup. We're going from a major two, the D major, to G major, well, it's really G7, and then to a C major. Two, five, one. D, D, B, G. I love it. C. Having the music get interrupted rhythmically, um, when it's so close to a resolution and then to have it resolve is an old film scoring technique and uh, I will give you a perfect example as the send-off to this That's all folks Classic Looney Tunes the Finn only version of this dub uh, with just the stuff I add on will be available in its regular unlisted video uh, linked below I know last video I said I was going to start including them in the main videos, but then I was like, that kind of ruins the flow. So bear with me as I navigate this new format of talking a little bit about uh, the theory and all this stuff after the dub. I'm very much enjoying it, but I'm still trying to figure out the best way to make it work. So bear with me. I appreciate you. And that is all for me. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye.